19. Patrick Perez Gonzalez Over a 15-month period that started in December 2014, a bikini model named Patricia Perez Gonzalez and her boyfriend, Alberto Campagnoni, stole an estimated $2 million from elderly victims by stealing their personal information and using it to open credit cards. The couple allegedly opened at least 40 different fraudulent American Express Platinum credit cards and used the ill-gotten funds to pay for lavish vacations, designer clothing, expensive dinners, and even luxury cars. They traveled to New York, Hawaii, and LA, and went on luxurious shopping sprees at Hermes, Burberry, Louis Vuitton, and Chanel. Perez Gonzalez also used the cards to fund her own business by buying wholesale merchandise that she then resold online for a profit. And for a while, she and Campagnoni lived an enviable lifestyle. But it was only a matter of time before the police discovered the couple's crimes and caught the pair, who traded their designer duds for khaki-colored jail garb after their headlined arrest in January 2016. A series of raids on various properties connected to the suspects revealed dozens of credit cards, forged IDs and driver's licenses, bank credit cards, a credit card encoder, over 10 phones, and a horde of fraudulently purchased merchandise like a Rolex watch, several dirt bikes, designer handbags, and more. Prosecutors described the couple and their accomplices as an organized crime ring who went out of their way to evade detection. In early 2017, Perez Gonzalez took a plea deal and blamed her actions on her self-described fling with Campagnoni. She pleaded guilty to one count of fourth-degree felony and somehow managed to avoid prison time while Campagnoni pleaded guilty to grand larceny and identity theft in exchange for a sentence of two to six years in federal prison. He was also ordered to surrender all of the belongings he acquired using the stolen lines of credit. 18. Heather McCartney A Scottish-born swimsuit model named Heather McCartney became synonymous with scandal back in 2014 when she stripped naked at the Australian Football League Grand Final. At the time, she just started her battle against a serious blood disease known as aplastic anemia. She was initially unsure whether she would survive the illness, but she managed the impossible, which made her all too aware of just how short life can be. McCartney said that she didn't regret the stripping incident one bit, even though she spent the night in jail and was fined heavily for it. She described it as a bucket list item that she pursued not long after being told that she could only have a few weeks to live. Life threw another curveball at the model in 2018, when her then-husband, Stuart Wetherill, brutally assaulted her, causing severe damage to her nose that some plastic surgeons refused to even attempt fixing. Wetherill managed to avoid an assault conviction, and McCartney suffered with the damage for two years before she was finally able to find a specialty surgeon to give her reconstructive surgery. The procedure involved taking cartilage from McCartney's rib and placing it in her nose, and she was also required to undergo another operation to realign her jaw position. As of 2021, McCartney said that she was focusing mainly on raising her young daughter, but she admitted that she hadn't ruled out the possibility of starting an OnlyFans. 17. Modo Adams By every appearance, British model Modo Adams was living a luxurious life that most people only dream of. On the surface, the 25-year-old was a jet-setting international playboy, who spent nights in glamorous cities all over the globe. But all that travel came at a higher cost than an honest living could ever afford and he was taking major risks to finance his lifestyle. The world learned the truth about how Adams was making his money in September 2023, when he was arrested at Jorge Chavez International Airport in Lima, Peru, after being caught red-handed with nearly three kilos of cocaine. Security personnel found the drugs hidden inside a secret compartment in his suitcase, 
Adam seemed confused by the discovery in surveillance footage, but that's how most people act when they get caught smuggling drugs and aren't ready to accept the reality that they've been busted. But Peruvian authorities prefer to resolve these cases as soon as possible, and Adams quickly realized that it was in his best interest to stop playing dumb. Less than 24 hours after being caught, he made an appearance in court and admitted to drug trafficking. He was then sentenced to almost seven years in prison. In some previous cases of British nationals being sent to prison for smuggling in Peru, prisoners have been released early to return to their home country to finish out the remainder of their sentence on parole. It seems to be too early on in Adam's case to predict whether or not he'll get that same opportunity. For now, he has no choice but to waste away behind bars in Peru and hope for a quicker end to his case than the release he's currently looking at. In the meantime, his social media accounts have all been shut down. 16. Omaima Nelson Egyptian model Omaima Nelson immigrated to the United States at the young age of 18 in search of a better future. Five years later, she landed at the center of one of California's most gruesome murder cases in recent history. In 1991, the 23-year-old met a 56-year-old pilot named William E. Bill Nelson. They married days later, and just a month after that, Bill went missing. During the investigation into his whereabouts, a friend of Omaima called the police and revealed that she'd offered them $75,000 to help her dispose of her husband's dismembered remains. Omaima cut up Bill's body, boiled his head, and cooked his hands in oil. She also castrated him, and there were even rumors claiming that she mixed his remains with leftover Thanksgiving turkey and ate pieces of his body parts, although she denied ever doing so. The rest of the remains were either shoved down the garbage disposal or wrapped up in newspaper and thrown in trash bags. During questioning, Omaima admitted to hitting Bill with a lamp before stabbing him with scissors. Although his body was so dismembered that it was impossible for investigators to determine a cause of death, she claimed that she acted in self-defense and that it was necessary to kill her husband to avoid being killed by him. Considering the circumstances and condition of Bill's body, though, the case seemed much more like a murder so Omaima was charged accordingly. Omaima's lawyer stood by her self-defense claim and argued that his client suffered from battered woman syndrome, thanks to several past abusive relationships. Prosecutors told a much different story, arguing that Omaima had a history of using her feminine charms to take advantage of wealthy older men, and that she planned to do the same to Bill. In early 1993, Omaima was convicted of second-degree murder. She was sentenced to 28 years to life in prison and became eligible for parole back in 2006. The parole board has denied her freedom thus far, and her next hearing date is scheduled for 2026. 15. Lilia Sudakova 26-year-old Russian Vogue model Lilia Sudakova never fully denied stabbing her husband of four years, Sergei Popov, during an argument in November 2020. Right after the incident took place at the couple's vacation home in St. Petersburg, she called the authorities for an ambulance. But 28-year-old Popov had been stabbed square in the heart, and doctors were unable to save him. His wife was later arrested for manslaughter and deliberately causing grievous bodily harm. Sudakova claimed that Popov was extremely abusive, especially when drunk, and insisted that she'd acted in self-defense. Her narrative was also backed up by her mother, Irina Sudakova, who told reporters that her daughter had been a longtime victim of domestic violence. More details about the incident came out in early 2022, when Sudakova confessed to killing Popov after he taunted her by coming home from the bar drunk with another woman. In her own words, she said, he wanted what I refused to do the night before. Sudakova accused Popov of bringing the girl home solely for the purpose of showing her that he could find someone else if he needed to. 
She tried to turn the tables by offering to cook for the woman, but not for her husband. This supposedly caused Popov to fly into a fit of rage and attack Sudakova in the kitchen while she was cutting a tomato. A friend, who was visiting from out of town, managed to pull Sergei off his wife, but he allegedly lunged at Sudakova a second time and grabbed onto her hair. At which point, she plunged the knife she was using to cut a tomato into her husband's heart. After Sudakova's confession, the manslaughter charge was upgraded to murder. Prosecutors accused her of deliberately stabbing Popov with the intent to kill him, while the defense argued that it was not only an impulsive accident, but an act of self-defense. According to the most recent updates on the case, Sudakova was awaiting trial and facing up to 15 years in prison if convicted. 14. Karina Korbalon Instagram model and nursing school student Karina Vanessa Korbalon had a growing fan base of about 9,000 followers when her career aspirations were unfortunately cut short due to a murder case. In early 2020, the 23-year-old was accused of fatally shooting her estranged boyfriend, 28-year-old Alejandro Sanchez, outside his house in Hialeah, Florida. Sanchez was hit by five of 15 bullets that Corbelan allegedly fired at him. Responding officers found the young woman kneeling over her bleeding boyfriend and a bullet-riddled Mercedes-Benz parked nearby. According to a few news reports, Corbelan and Sanchez had an extremely toxic relationship and were no longer together during the time of the shooting. The pair were reportedly seen fighting before the gunfire broke out. Corbelan's arrest came on the heels of another case involving allegations that she tried to hit a cop and violently resisted arrest. The charges in the previous case were dropped after she completed a pre-trial diversion program. Records show that Corbelan remains behind bars in Miami-Dade County while awaiting the outcome of her case. She's now facing charges of second-degree murder with a weapon and five counts of battery by a detainee on another detainee visitor. So it seems like even behind bars, she can't stay out of trouble. 13. Kristen Olsen At first glance, it seemed as if 54-year-old Todd Mooney and his daughter Kira passed away in a horrific tragedy. Their charred bodies were discovered among the debris of a burned-down shed in the rural Australian town of Bigenden, Queensland in December 2022, just one week before Todd was supposed to marry his partner. But their autopsy suggested that they'd met with foul play, forcing police officers to launch an investigation into their deaths. All signs pointed toward the murders being random acts of violence, despite their gruesome nature. Detectives eventually narrowed their focus down to Kristen Olsen, a 24-year-old travel blogger and OnlyFans model who traveled all over the country while living inside her van. In early 2023, she was charged with two counts of murder as well as one count of arson. She also faces three counts of arson and one count of theft over a separate alleged incident that happened on the same day. Olsen has no known prior connections to Todd or Kira Mooney, and authorities have yet to announce a suspected motive for the double homicide. The case has also been met with several unexpected delays. In August 2023, prosecutors announced that they'd encountered hurdles regarding DNA evidence. They said it would take at least three more months to get the results they were waiting for, and it looks as though the wait is still ongoing. According to the most recent updates on the case, Olsen remains in custody while waiting for trial. 12. Isabel Rose McKean Australian adult content creator Isabel Rose McKean didn't seem to take it all that seriously when she was arrested in connection to a stabbing that happened in September 2023. After her release from police custody, she wrote a seemingly nonchalant Instagram post with the caption, What a week! accompanied by multiple police car, chains, and lock emojis. The 25-year-old and a co-defendant, 24-year-old Tom Starkey, are currently accused of forcing entry into a home in Pomona, Queensland late at night before stabbing a 23-year-old male victim. 
According to police, the victim suffered several stab wounds, but was taken to the hospital in stable condition. Luckily, he was expected to survive. In court, McKean and Starkey were accused of threatening the victim just days before the stabbing during a fight over drug money. The suspects each face charges of entering a dwelling at night with intent while armed, wounding, and willful damage. Starkey was initially denied bail, but McKean was released under strict conditions, including a 9 p.m. curfew, absolutely no drug or alcohol use, and no communication with her co-defendant. In February 2024, Starkey was released on bail under the agreement that he had to take random drug tests administered by his mother. He and McKean are not allowed to have any contact with each other as their cases continue through the court system. 11. Hevo Rolando Gonzalez A heated exchange of words fired between a model and a panhandler outside a Miami gas station took a deadly turn for the worse in August 2018 when one of the men violently beat the other to death with a baseball bat. The model, 32-year-old Hevo Rolando Gonzalez, was minding his own business, filling his gas tank up and cleaning his boat, which was attached to his pickup truck. When 49-year-old Pedro Cruz suddenly approached him, surveillance footage showed the two men interacting for a few minutes before Gonzalez grabbed a fish bat from his truck and chased after Cruz. He then struck Cruz over the head twice, causing injuries that the homeless man would die from at the hospital days later. As Cruz lay motionless on the ground, Gonzalez was seen getting into his truck and leaving the crime scene. He allegedly failed to call 911, render aid, or find any help at all for Cruz. Police eventually were able to catch up with Gonzalez and charged him with second-degree murder. His attorney, H. Scott Fingerhut, told the Miami Herald that Cruz had repeatedly threatened his client after Gonzalez refused to give him his money. Fingerhut was adamant that his client was not a killer, but records show that Gonzalez was convicted of manslaughter by culpable negligence. He was sentenced to serve five years behind bars but appears to have fulfilled his sentence back in 2022 after serving four years of prison and probation. 10. Marzena Camizella It's fairly common nowadays to see news articles about travelers having meltdowns and throwing temper tantrums on airplanes. But it was much rarer back in 2006, which was probably why it came as a huge shock when a Swedish model named Marzena Camizella was dragged off a British Airways flight in Labrador, Canada for explosive mid-air behavior. The 32-year-old was accused of refusing to sit in her assigned seat during a flight from New York to London. Her behavior escalated to the point where cabin crew members had to restrain her as she kicked and screamed like a toddler. Camizella's outburst triggered an emergency landing, and she was held in jail for seven days. She admitted that she was drunk during the flight, but denied doing anything wrong, claiming that she refused to sit because the fasten seatbelt sign was not lit. Speaking with CBC News, Kamizella said that she didn't see the big deal about having a few drinks before flying, or why crew members went to the extreme of tying her into a seat. Despite her claims of innocence, she pleaded guilty to four charges, including three counts of assaulting crew members. She was ordered to pay $28,000 in fines and reimbursement to British Airways before leaving Canada. But her lawyer managed to negotiate a much lower amount, which allowed her to leave the country after paying just $9,000, and agreeing to pay another $9,000 over an extended six-month period. 9. David Byers David Byers made a living as a fitness model who made appearances on the covers of romance novels. But it apparently didn't pay enough to get by. So in 2017, he embarked on a cross-country spree of armed robberies in stolen vehicles, earning him the nickname The Beefcake Bandit. The 35-year-old got away with $300 cash after his first robbery at a gas station in Long Island, New York. He then entered a Chase bank the next day wearing a bandana over his face, 
and carrying what looked to be a gun and demanded money. From there, Byers traveled to Connecticut, where he committed a few more robberies. But he led them on a high-speed chase before ditching the stolen car he was driving and fleeing on foot. He managed to evade custody long enough to slap plates on another stolen car and start his journey back to the West Coast. Byers ditched his stolen vehicle once again during a police chase in Pennsylvania. He then stole a pickup truck and drove to Maryland, where he stole more plates for it, and he managed to get all the way to Arizona before attracting the attention of law enforcement. Yet again, Byers fled on foot and stayed at large until he made it to San Diego, where he was taken into custody. The so-called Beefcake Bandit pleaded guilty to the string of robberies and was sentenced to spend nearly seven and a half years in prison. He was also ordered to pay back the $15,000 he stole during his illegal spree. 8. Supatra Tansuvit In 2018, 24-year-old Thai American former model Supatra Tansuvit was facing criminal charges in Los Angeles for identity theft when she went on the run and skipped trial. Described by police officers as a prolific identity thief, she went into hiding with her boyfriend, Robert Carasquillo, who was also wanted for failing to appear in court on a felony charge. Authorities almost captured Supatra during a high-speed chase in July 2019, but she was able to get away after fleeing Carasquillo's high-end sports car on foot. Carasquillo was later arrested while Supatra remained at large for another month. She was nabbed in late August outside her home, where investigators had been conducting surveillance and waiting for their chance to take her into custody. During a search of the young woman's property, police found a credit card mill, identity theft equipment, and $5,000 cash. Supatra was apprehended on outstanding felony warrants and charged with identity theft-related crimes. While the outcome of the case is unclear, records show that no one by her name is currently incarcerated in the state prison system, indicating that she's already served her debt to society or managed to avoid time behind bars completely. 7. Tara Lambert Having a relationship with a single parent can be difficult, especially when that person is caught up in a custody battle with the other parent. When former model Tara Lambert found herself and her husband trapped in a custody dispute with the mother of her two stepchildren in 2015, she decided that it'd be easier to have Kelly Cook killed than to try to peacefully coexist with her. Lambert reached out to a former high school classmate to see if they knew anyone who was able to do the job. Much to her luck, they happened to know a hitman, or so she thought. In reality, the old friend went straight to the police after hearing Lambert's request. Investigators started recording the phone calls between Lambert and the friend, and the assassin was actually just an undercover cop. Lambert met up with the undercover agent in a parking lot and gave a $125 down payment to make Kelly go away. Little did she know, she would soon be the one going away to prison. During questioning, Lambert claimed that she only wanted to hurt the victim. She insisted that she never intended to kill Kelly. But police officers had listened to her entire conversation with the undercover cop, and they were happy to refresh her memory by replaying what she said for her. The authorities were also happy to play the recording for a jury and let them choose Lambert's fate the jury found Lambert guilty. During her sentencing hearing, she rolled her eyes at the judge, interrupted him, and even shook her head rudely. Her original sentence of seven years was overturned, earning her another trial. She pleaded guilty during the second trial and was given a five-year sentence. 6. Dean Kelly in an era before Instagram and OnlyFans existed, former model Dean Kelly became a celebrity when he made an appearance in Aerosmith's crazy music video back in 1994. In the video, he was seen riding a tractor while shirtless in a field. But his fame seemed to both start and end right there. And his life took a dark turn in the early 2000s that has only continued on a downward trajectory ever since. 
In 2005, Kelly was accused of assaulting two women. Nine years later, in 2014, he was convicted in yet another assault case in Louisiana and sentenced to 10 years in prison. Two years into his sentence, Kelly was charged with trying to hire a hitman to kill former New Orleans district attorney, Leon Cannizzaro, the judge who oversaw his case, as well as his defense attorney. For this, he pleaded guilty to threatening a public official and received a suspended prison sentence along with two years of probation. Kelly was released from prison in 2022, but he didn't stay out for very long. In late 2023, he was accused in yet another assault case. He was then released to his mother's supervision after posting a $1.1 million bond and is on an ankle monitor with strict rules while he awaits the outcome of his case. He can't go any further than his front porch without triggering an alarm, which immediately alerts the authorities if he breaches the boundaries of his home. Kelly is also banned from using the internet and dating sites, which is reportedly how he found his latest victim, and was also ordered to surrender his passport. 5. Samantha Kuro When a 31-year-old model and influencer named Samantha Kuro's friend approached her with scandalous footage of a well-known celebrity in 2018, the two started hatching a plot to extort money from the star using blackmail threats. The women, who live in Toronto, worked with a third woman in the US to demand $2 million from the man in exchange for agreeing not to publish the video online. Authorities have declined to release the identity of the celebrity victim, stating only that he's a famous athlete. The footage the women threatened to publicize reportedly shows him in the throes of a drug-fueled party with two of the suspects. Each woman was paid $2,000 for her time, but they were both unsatisfied with the amount of money and took a piece of designer luggage as collateral with expectations of several future payments. When the man failed to pay up, the threats to post the video started, and Kuro was brought into the fray to help the women with their plan. The victim changed his phone number, and his wife and daughter started receiving harassing messages, at which point his lawyer told him to go directly to the FBI. Under the impression that they were speaking with the victim's financial advisor, the suspects negotiated the payment. Little did they know, they were actually interacting with an FBI agent, and they were quickly arrested for their crimes. The escorts who recorded the video were sentenced to over a year in prison. As of early 2022, Kuro was in a Canadian jail awaiting extradition to the US, where she'll face additional criminal charges. 4. Logan Barnhart During the US Capitol riot that took place on January 6, 2021, a man was seen dragging a police officer down a set of stairs before another rioter beat the officer up with a flagpole. The man landed high on the list of wanted suspects for the riot, but managed to fly under the radar for seven months, before a group of online sleuths called the Sedition Hunters finally helped identify him using facial recognition technology. As a result of their immense efforts, they obtained footage of the suspect without his sunglasses on, leading to a huge break in the case. Using a facial recognition website, the sleuths were able to identify the man as a 40-year-old bodybuilder and romance novel cover model named Logan Barnhart. He has appeared on several bodybuilding websites, in photography portfolios, and on the covers of books with titles like Stepbrother Unsealed, A Bad Boy Military Romance. The man in the photos certainly resembled the suspect, but it was Barnhart's Instagram content that pointed to his involvement in the riot. In addition to posting countless right-wing memes and shirtless thirst trap images, his profile included pictures of him wearing a hat and sweatshirt that match the description of the suspect's attire from January 6th. The sedition hunters passed their findings on to law enforcement, and the FBI arrested Barnhart. He pleaded guilty to assaulting an officer in exchange for prosecutors agreeing to drop a few other charges, and was ultimately sentenced to three years in federal prison. 3. Catherine Young In late 2020, 
Police officers in Londonderry, Northern Ireland, got a call asking them to check on the mental health of former fitness model Catherine Young, who'd recently made a concerning social media post. Officers visited her address and found the decomposing body of her partner, Barry Devlin, who died several weeks earlier from drug and alcohol abuse. At the time, Catherine was getting treatment at a hospital for depression. She claimed that she had no idea Barry was dead and that she thought he was just drying out from drugs at another facility. After not hearing from her lover for a while, the 35-year-old also entertained the possibility that he was done with their relationship and had walked away. Unswayed by Catherine's story, authorities accused her of stealing Barry's debit card and failing to report his death. She was also charged with stealing another man's car keys in the process. Catherine already had two previous boyfriends who died from suspicious overdoses, earning her the reputation of a black widow. She also had a history of mental illness and substance abuse, but she continued to maintain her innocence in the case. There was no evidence to suggest that Catherine entered her and Barry's flat after his death. A surveillance camera caught her picking up the mail, but she never actually went inside. And while police claimed that Barry's body was visible through a window, the court accepted her claim that she never knew he was dead. The case was dismissed and Catherine moved on with her life. She told the Sunday World that she started a charity to offer support to people with depression and said that she knows she's burned many bridges, but that she's determined to rebuild her life. 2. Mirella Zioba Greed got the better of former Michigan model and real estate agent Mirella Zioba, who was accused of trying to extort a wealthy married businessman in 2013. The 33-year-old married mother of three met the 61-year-old executive during one of her real estate dealings. She tricked him into talking to her in an aggressive and explicit manner during their first date, unaware that she was recording the conversation the whole time. Zioba also allegedly sent the victim several suggestive photographs, which she later used in attempts to blackmail the man into giving her over $250,000 in hush money. The payments started out small after Zioba tested the waters by asking for $1,400 for a laptop she claimed she needed for use for business. When he failed to respond to her text messages, she sent him a warning implying that she'd tell his wife about their secret meetings. Even though there was never any evidence to suggest that they were intimate, it scared the victim enough to hand over the $1,400 though at which point Zioba aimed higher and demanded the $250,000 she was truly after. She was accused of harassing the businessman with threats to get a lawyer involved, contact the media, and expose his behavior to his wife. At one point, Zioba even had a lawyer friend call the victim and play a recording of this suggestive conversation they had during their first date. The victim also started receiving mysterious phone calls late at night, which included sound clips of the conversation. But instead of ponying up the six-figure sum Zioba was demanding, he went to the FBI. With help from agents, he convinced Zioba to accept $100,000 instead in $5,000 installments. And they arranged a time and place to meet up for the handoff. She was happy to accept the cash only to receive a rude awakening a few days later, when the FBI arrested her for extortion. If convicted, she could have faced up to five years in prison. Unfortunately, there were no updates to the story after it made news headlines, leaving the outcome of the case unclear. And now for number one. But if you want to hear more bizarre and crazy stories, stay tuned after the video for some more content. One, Lori Fan tragedy befell a Canadian family in 2017 when 27-year-old Noel Williams was shot and killed outside his family's home in Markham, Ontario. Investigators traced the crime to 22-year-old aspiring model Lori Fan and her co-conspirator, 28-year-old Jasper Atienza, who were accused of luring the victim into an SUV with a promise to return his stolen cell phone. 
The trio were involved in the drug trade, and Williams had robbed Atienza about a month prior. But Williams trusted him for some odd reason, and he paid for it with his life when he was hit by three bullets. Fan denied involvement in the crime, while Atienza pointed the finger at other people in the SUV, claiming he had no knowledge ahead of time that there was going to be a shooting. Police officers arrested both Atienza and Fan on suspicion of first-degree murder. While in jail awaiting trial, Fan gave birth to a baby boy. It was a heartbreaking reality, leaving the young woman unsure if she would be given an opportunity to raise the child as the case dragged on with an uncertain future. The trial finally happened in 2019 and ended with a guilty verdict for Atienza while Fan was acquitted and released. She was reunited with her child and has since remained absent from news headlines, which hopefully means she's surrounded herself with better company. Number 10, Slapping Passengers. A former Playboy model was arrested after a bizarre outburst on a Delta flight. The ex-model went on an insane tirade and slapped a bunch of passengers across the face. Her name is Patricia Cornwall. Besides being a model for Playboy, she was also an actress in the show Baywatch. It was the FBI who made the arrest after she disrupted her flight from Tampa to Atlanta. According to fellow passengers and employees with their airline, she caused a mid-air disturbance. And luckily for all of us, the disturbance was caught on video and spread around the internet. But here's when things got controversial. We've all seen the videos of anti-maskers freaking out in department stores making a scene. But this was the opposite. Patricia got angry because a man sitting near her wasn't wearing a mask, and yet she wasn't wearing a mask either. She had it tucked under her chin. Patricia screamed at him to put his mask on. He called her a Karen and told her to sit down. Then she slapped him across the face and shrieked, you're going to jail. We don't know what got into Patricia to make her have such a crazy outburst in the middle of a flight, but she ended up being dragged away by crew members. They took her down the aisle where she flailed and screamed and cursed. If she had really been so worried about his mask, she probably shouldn't have also spat on him. When the flight finally landed at the Atlanta International Airport, the model was the one who got arrested. Number 9. Accidental Stabbing Jeannie Exum, a model on Instagram and OnlyFans, was arrested for stabbing her boyfriend. The police received a call on a Monday evening just before 7 o'clock. A man had been assaulted inside of an apartment in Manhattan on 10th Avenue. The NYPD said in a statement that when they arrived, the man told them he'd gotten in an argument with his girlfriend. His girlfriend, the model, lashed out and stabbed him in the arm with a kitchen knife. Then she plunged it into his back. She stabbed him in the back in the most literal sense of the phrase. The boyfriend was transported to the hospital in stable condition, and Jeannie Exum was arrested. The boyfriend, identified as Francis Amore, is also an internet personality. The judge put a no contact order against Jeannie, barring her from being close to or even speaking with Francis. Jeannie is also facing a felony assault charge. The wounds may have only been superficial, with her boyfriend getting a few stitches and being released from the hospital. But she still stabbed somebody. The only thing is that the boyfriend doesn't want the case to go forward, so she'll probably get away clean. It's not even the first time she's gotten in trouble with the law. Just a little while ago, the Instagram model got in some hot water for flashing the cops and posting a picture of it on Instagram. Number 8. 14 Wounds Melanie was discovered dead in her guest house with 14 stab wounds. It happened in Rosario, Argentina. Melanie's friend became concerned after no one had heard from her for a while. She wasn't answering her phone calls, but the most telling sign was that she hadn't been active on social media for over 48 hours. This was very unusual for her and it prompted friends and family to call the police. The cops then got a hold of her sister, who happened to have a spare key to the guest house where she was staying. When the cops entered the guest house, they found Melanie's lifeless corpse. Melanie was a model on OnlyFans. Her body was on the floor of the guest house, her head resting on the side of the mattress, and stab wounds all across her body. It looked like somebody went berserk on her with no rhyme or reason. The front door hadn't been burst open, the window wasn't forced, and the lights were off but the TV was turned on and cranked to full volume. The only item missing from the guest house was her cell phone. Clearly, somebody wanted to cover their tracks. It was quite a mystery for the police, who haven't actually solved it yet. Eyewitnesses say they saw one male person entering the lodgings and then leaving early in the morning. 
He'd been several times going in and out. It must have been somebody the model knew, but nobody has been able to identify the mysterious guy yet. The most popular theory right now is that she has been having an affair with somebody. She kept it a secret from her friends, and that secret lover ended up being a psychotic murderer. Number 7. The Cat Model A model was arrested in the Brazilian coastal town of Matino back in November. She was arrested for the part she played in the assassination of her husband, which took place during their son's birthday party. Her name is Camila Merodin, an online model and fashion influencer. Her husband, Ricardo Merodin, was believed by local police to be the leader of a drug cartel, but after his death, that proved not to be the case. They now believe it was actually his model wife who was in charge of the entire cartel. They're now trying to bring her up on three murder charges, one for her husband and two for a pair of cops who were assassinated. Camila's capture was part of a military police operation in which they arrested 14 other members of the cartel. They went to her house and carried out the arrest warrant, only to discover she already fled. But she wasn't that hard to track down, and police managed to snag her as she tried to run away to her mother's house. As for why she shot down her husband, it wasn't Camila herself who pulled the trigger. It was members of the criminal gang she was in charge of. Four armed suspects showed up to her son's fourth birthday party and executed her husband. They used the same vehicle that was involved in the assassination of two cops just days before. But why she orchestrated such a brutal killing is still under investigation. Why do you think she wanted her husband dead? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Number 6. Run Down by a Train In Texas, a 19-year-old model was run over by a train in a horrible photo shoot gone wrong. A local official says that the exact reason why people aren't supposed to play on railroad tracks. The Texas teen, identified as Fredzania Thompson, was new to the world of modeling and needed some good photos. She and her photographer went to Navasota, about 60 miles from Houston. It was the middle of the afternoon, and the photographer had Fredzania stand between two sets of tracks. Lo and behold, two trains began to approach from opposite directions. The problem really was that there were two trains. They were both blowing their horns, but the model only thought there was one coming at her. She moved out of the path of the train she saw in front of her, unwittingly walking directly into the path of a different train. She never even saw it coming. She stepped out of the way of imminent death and fell directly into her grave. Number 5. A Bad Influence A man killed his family in a bizarre incident involving a webcam girl. His name is Grant Amato, a Florida native who had no job and no prospects in life. He was completely obsessed with an online model who performed adult shows on her webcam. The webcam model, a random woman from Bulgaria, had no idea that she was inspiring a psychopath to take out his whole family. According to prosecutors in the case, Grant only murdered his family after they gave him an ultimatum. They said he needed to stop his unhealthy relationship with the Bulgarian model and get off the adult website or they would cut him off completely. The reason his parents were so upset was that he had already stolen over 200,000 from family members to continue tipping the model online. This was the only way he could sustain his relationship with her. When his parents cut him off, he was so angry that he killed his mother and left her face down on the computer desk. He then waited for his father to get home from work before killing him too. When his brother arrived home later, he shot him in the head and then set it up to make it look as though his brother had done a murder-suicide. But of course, the cops were able to look at the clues and figure out what really happened. Grant has since been given life in prison, narrowly escaping the death penalty. Number 4. The OnlyFans Pimp A Florida woman named Lashana Williams has been arrested and charged with second-degree murder. According to the police, she allegedly killed her boyfriend by zipping him up in a suitcase and leaving him to suffocate. But that's only one piece of the bizarre story. Detectives say that Lashana was a model on OnlyFans who had solo photographs as well as videos of herself and her boyfriend. It started out small, but she actually started to make some money. When her boyfriend realized how much money she was bringing in through her activities on OnlyFans, he told her that he wanted a cut of the action. In other words, he tried to become her OnlyFans pimp. Sadly for him, he didn't turn out to be a very tough pimp. Lashana managed to manhandle her boyfriend into a suitcase and zip it closed. But she had been drinking at the time and passed out afterwards. She didn't wake up until 11 o'clock the next morning. By then, her boyfriend had been in the bag for hours. He ran out of air and suffocated. 
slowly dying as he tried desperately to free himself from a measly suitcase. Number 3. Jasmine Fior Jasmine Fior was a California model whose body was discovered in August of 2009 stuffed into a suitcase. Her remains had been so badly mutilated that nobody could identify her. Police investigators only figured out who she was when they looked at the serial numbers of her breast implants. At the time of her death, she was just 28 years old. The police had one suspect and one suspect only, former reality TV contestant Ryan Jenkins. He was Jasmine's husband at the time of the death. Just one week after his wife was found in the suitcase, he too was discovered dead in a hotel room in the small Canadian town of Hope. The last time Jasmine was seen alive, she and Ryan were leaving a nightclub in downtown San Diego at about 4.30 in the morning. Ryan returned to their hotel by himself, and Jasmine vanished. This was on October 13th. Ryan reported her missing two days later. The same day, her corpse was found. Ryan then went on the run. Police found his SUV in an empty boat trailer at a marina in Washington. When they found it, the engine was still warm. Ryan took his boat and crossed the border into Canada, evading Canadian authorities. He was found several days later hanging from a clothes rack by his neck. No note was found, and so police have never truly been able to find out what happened. Nobody knows what motive Ryan could have had for killing the model, nor why he traveled all the way to Canada just to end it himself. There may have been a third party involved, but we just have no idea. Number two, husband killer. When a man taunted his model wife, she killed him. Lilia Sudakova, 27 years old, is looking at a sentence of 15 years in prison for the death of Sergei Popov. She claims she was acting in self-defense and was a victim of domestic abuse. She says he was dead drunk at the time of the killing. He arrived home with some random girl to make Lilia jealous. But it was actually the night before when trouble started. He wanted to get busy, but Lilia wasn't in the mood. The whole act of bringing a random girl home the next night was supposed to be to show the model that he could have any other woman at any other time. It was a taunt, and one that landed him dead. Nobody really knows what happened that night. Lilia says he became aggressive and attacked her as she was cooking. She was cutting a tomato with a kitchen knife when Sergei grabbed her. When she tried to push him away, she accidentally stabbed him in the chest. But according to the prosecution, that's not what happened at all. Lilia stabbed her husband intentionally to get rid of him. The trial is still ongoing, and we don't know how it all ended for the young model. She has appeared in magazines in Italy, Japan, and China, and was even the face of a clothing brand in Moscow. But now, she might just spend the rest of her youth behind bars. And number one, Olympic murder. Olympic runner Oscar Pistorius competed at the 2012 Olympics. It was arguably the best year of his life. He shot to fame as a double amputee athlete. He even managed to hook himself a model, Riva Steenkamp. But on Valentine's Day of 2013, he threw all of the fame and success in the garbage by shooting Riva several times through a closed bathroom door at his house. In 2015, Pistorius was convicted of murder and given 13 years and five months. In 2021, after serving half his sentence, he went up for parole. But we don't know if he's going to get out of prison yet because he first needs to meet the parents of the model he murdered. It's part of an initiative to give closure to the family of the deceased. But because of COVID, things have been a little tricky and the Olympic runner is still waiting. It's hard to say exactly what will happen. The runner defended himself in court, saying that it was a tragic accident and he claimed to have mistaken the model for a dangerous intruder on the night of the killing. Because he stuck to that story this whole time, we don't actually know what kind of motive he might have had for murdering the young girl in cold blood. Thanks for watching. If you had to choose, would you rather be known for having stunning beauty but being dysfunctional, or for being an accomplished individual with a good head on your shoulders but not great in the looks department? Let us know in the comments below.